Hey guys, today I wanted to share a transition technique that I developed recently. It involves a few effects, but the main idea is using what's called mesh warp effect in Adobe After Effects. For this to work well, I would suggest that the objects in both shots would have similar shapes, or at least something in common. It's also important that the camera is moving in the same direction or it's stationary in both shots. All right, I think we're good to go now, so let's jump into it. Here I'm in Premiere Pro and I have two clips which I'm gonna use for this example. The first thing I'm gonna do is speed up the end of the first clip and the beginning of the second clip. Speed change will help to emphasize the illusion of morphing. To do that, right click on a clip, show clip keyframes, time remapping, speed. Create a keyframe and create an exponential speed curve for a smooth speed change. Then just repeat the process for the second clip. Next we will nest each clip. This is done because we are going to stabilize them. Then select both clips and while holding Alt on a keyboard drag them up and duplicate. This will be our backup in case something goes wrong. Now select the top clips, right click, replace with After Effects composition. This will open up After Effects and everything we do here will be transmitted to Premiere Pro sequence. The next step is to redo the speed curve. Unfortunately, Adobe doesn't transfer speed curve data from Premiere Pro to After Effects. So you have to either do speed change in After Effects or just redo the speed curve. I find the second option to be more time efficient. To do that, double click on a nested sequence, expand clip properties, select both time remapping keyframes and enable graph editor. Next, make sure you have only edit speed graph enabled. Then you have to drag the left handle down and the right handle up. Adjust the curve until you get a nice S-like shape, looking something like this. Repeat the process for the second clip. Alright, now as we have the speed fixed, we will stabilize both clips. Find Warp Stabilizer effect and drag it on your nested sequence. I find values 1-5% to work best. You can also experiment with other settings, but in most cases, this will work well. Do the same thing for the second clip too. Ok, now we will finally start warping. But just before that, we need to create some room for the transition. And for that, we simply need to overlap both clips. For this example, I'm going to use 11 frames, but I think a higher number will work too. So I would suggest to experiment with this as well. Now in the effects library, find an effect called Mesh Warp and apply it to the first clip. Next, under the Transform properties, reduce the opacity to around 50%, so you could see both clips at the same time. Place your cursor a few frames before the second clip starts and enable keyframe animation for distortion mesh. Go to the end of the first clip and here we will start warping the mesh. I find it faster to first start with a lower number of rows and columns, make rough adjustments, then increase the number and make more fine adjustments. Start moving the mesh points so the edges of the object you are working with match the other clip's object. In my case, I'm trying to make the white fountain more narrow and kind of fit inside the narrow one. As I said, we are only doing rough adjustments at the moment. Try not to overlap the mesh lines because you will get some weird looking results. Squeeze them if you have to by moving the surrounding mesh points. 
Now we will increase the number of rows and columns and make more fine adjustments. If you accidentally move something you did not want to, use Ctrl Z. As you can see, I'm really trying to align the edges of the fountain to make it fit into the narrow one. The more precisely you do this, the better the final result will be. Also try to make the gaps between mesh points more evenly spread by adjusting the surrounding points. Now we will repeat the process for the second clip except the keyframe for the uniform mesh will create a few frames after the end of the first clip. Then go back to the beginning of the second clip and start warping the mesh of the second clip. Select the second clip and then select the mesh warp effect so you can see the mesh points. The idea here is the same. In my case, I'm trying to make the fin fountain, which is from the second clip, have a shape similar to the wide fountain, which is from the first clip. Once you're done with the mesh adjustments, we need to animate the opacity. Go one frame before the beginning of the second clip and create an opacity keyframe with 100% value. Then go to the end of the first clip and change opacity value to 0. The final step is to add some motion blur. This is because we increase the speed in some parts and those parts lack a realistic motion blur. You can do this transition without the speed change and in that case you would skip this step. To add motion blur, find CC force motion blur effect and add it to the original clip inside the nested sequence. Increase the motion blur samples value to around 15 for a better quality. Repeat the process for the second clip. And there's one more thing I want to mention. Sometimes if your camera movement is very uneven, you might have to create another mesh warp keyframe in the middle of the transition. While we have aligned the edges of clips at the beginning and the end of the transition, sometimes they might get misaligned in the middle. So if that's your case, simply add another keyframe in the middle and do the necessary adjustments. And that is it. I hope this technique worked well for you. If not, you might need to experiment with different objects or camera movements. Also, keep in mind that you can combine this method with other tools and create new and unique transitions. So that is all for today. If you found this video useful, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the upcoming tutorials and filmmaking guides. Have fun guys, I'll see you in the next video.